In this video, we're going to take a look at the strengths of acids and bases. You might have heard the term strong base, strong acid, weak base, weak acid. And so now we're going to take a look at what that means today. Um, so we're going to start off with um, strong bases, strong acids. Uh, and what they do is they will ionize or dissociate 100% in water. So for example, let's say I had HCl. HCl is considered a strong acid. Why is that? Well, if you put HCl in water, let's say you had 100 molecules of it before um, ionization, um, all of those molecules that you put in will ionize and become H plus and Cl minus. So all of the HCl ionizes, becomes its become the um, will separate into its ions, essentially. Well, form ions in water. So H plus and Cl minus, every single HCl molecule you put in there. That's by definition a strong acid. Let's look at a weak acid. A weak acid, a weak base, they will dissociate or ionize only partially in water, so not fully in water. In other words, a very small percentage will become ions when you put them in water. So if we look over here, we have um, acetic acid. Acetic acid, um, you put some in water, and notice that not all of it became ions. Notice 99% stays as CH3COOH, and only about 1% became ions. So when you put this in water here, notice a lot of molecules remain, and only a few of them became ions in, in water. So weak acids, weak bases, they only partially ionize or dissociate, whereas strong acids, strong bases will fully ionize and dissociate. Every single one of those HCLs became H plus Cl minus. This weak one here, not every single H2CO3 became HCO3 minus and H plus here, only a few did. Same idea in these graphs here, that's what that illustrates. For that reason, strong acids and strong bases are usually pretty good at conducting electricity or better at conducting electricity than weak acids and weak bases are because they have more ions in there. Weak acids and weak bases will not conduct electricity as well as their strong acid, uh, strong base counterparts because there's not as many ions in there. So that's really what strength refers to, how good you are at being an acid, how good you are at being a base in terms of dissociating and ionizing. If it's 100%, strong acid, strong base. If it's not 100%, then you're a weak acid or weak base. So here we have again our definitions. Our strong acid is something that ionizes very, very well. Basically, all of it, 100%, will ionize. In other words, will become ions. Remember, these are typically, if you were to write them as gases um, or their molecular forms, um, they would typically be, well, molecules without ions. But when you put them in water, they ionize. They actually become ions. That's why we say the term ionize for acids. Um, and so these are our strong acids. These are the ones you, that you should know. So these are the... the um, six strong acids, these ones will ionize 100% in water. All the other acids will be less than 100%. So this reaction goes all the way 100%, um, as you can see in these equations here. So we have HCl plus H2O. Um, all the HCl will ionize to become Cl minus and H3O plus. You can also write it the short way, but understand that it's going all the way to the right side. 100%, there won't be any HCl left over. Same thing with the H2SO4 example over here, or any of these will behave in much the same way. Um, so these are your six strong acids. There's another one that's not included in that list. Um, a couple others that are not included in that list over here. Um, so there's the, um, the iodic acid over here, for example, selenic acid, uh, bromic acid. Those are other um, strong acids as well. That would be good to know. They're not as common as the other ones um, that you see listed here, but they are still considered uh, strong acids. So remember a weak acid, only a small percentage of the acid is going to ionize. Uh, an example is acetic acid. Just to compare the two over here, we have our weak acid plus H2O. We still show the ionization happening, but it's not all the molecules that will do that. Here we have a strong acid plus H2O. We show the ionization and it's all the molecules doing that. Now, one way to differentiate within your reaction if you have a strong or a weak acid, or same thing with a strong or a weak base, you look at the arrows. For a strong acid or strong base, it's a one-way arrow. A one-way arrow, that means it's going 100% towards the ionization side. For a weak acid or weak base, we have a double arrow. That basically means an equilibrium. I'll write that out later on. It's an equilibrium. Basically, it's not 100% towards that side and it goes back and forth. So it's not going to be 100% ionization and it goes back and forth. And there's ways to calculate how far it goes to the right. But right now, just get that for weak acids, weak bases, we put a double arrow. So for example, over here, we show a double arrow rather than a single arrow because we have a weak acid over here. Um, strong bases, 
they again they will dissociate we don't say ionize we'd say dissociate for bases because they, they already exist as ions um a, a difference to notice is that when you write out for example the ionization equation for an acid the acid is aqueous um, whereas for a base you start off by writing it as a solid and then you put the aqueous ions but we'll go over that in more detail in the next video so strong bases they will dissociate 100 percent in in aqueous solutions because um in aqueous solutions um, and we have a one-way arrow for them. Uh, here you can see your strong bases. These are the strong bases that you should know. And then the other bases are typically gonna be weak bases. But as you can see here, we have NaOH solid becomes Na plus AQ, NOH minus AQ. KOH solid becomes K plus AQ, NOH minus AQ. It's a one-way arrow. Our weak base dissociates partially, not 100%. So for weak bases, we're gonna have our double arrow. Strong bases have a single arrow, like you can see here. Weak bases has, have the double arrow, as you can see there. Um, and again, they only partially dissociate if they're weak bases, unlike the strong bases, which is 100% dissociation. So I've been using the two terms, ionization and dissociation. I did describe them, but they're defined for you here as well. So ionization is when ions are formed by polar molecules. So um, if you have, let's say, HCl, that's a molecule. It's a, it's a polar molecule. It doesn't exist as ions immediately. When you put it in water, then they become ions. So ionization is you didn't have ions before and then you transformed into ions. That's, that's what happens with acids. Bases go through dissociation. They're ionic compounds already. So the ions are already there. So we just say the ions dissociate when you put them in water as opposed to form because the ions don't really form. They've already existed there to begin with. They just separate from each other because the water goes in between. So we learned about the strengths of acids and bases in this video. We're going to go and summarize it um, on our handout. After we're done summarizing the uh, strengths of acids and bases, we're going to go and write ionization equations for acids and bases. So let's go ahead to our handout here and summarize what we just learned. So strong acids, strong bases, they will ionize or dissociate completely in water. In other words, 100% of what you put in there becomes ions. That's why strong acids and bases are better at conducting electricity in solution than weak acids, weak bases, because they do not ionize 100% in water. They ionize or dissociate partially, partially in water. So it's not, it's not a full way. It's only partially. So less than 100%. And we saw our graph um, that went over that. Uh, so next we're going to go and we're going to um, just uh, take a look at some examples of strong acids, weak acids, strong bases, weak bases. Uh, so here we have our strong acids. Remember they ionize extremely well, basically 100%. These are the examples of strong acids that, uh, that you should know. There's six common ones that were listed in the table, but then there's a few additional ones that you can see in this list here. Uh, for strong acids, we use the one-way arrow because it basically implies that we go completely in the direction of ionization. So we can see that in the examples over here. We're using our one-way arrow every single time when we're dealing with a strong acid. When we have weak acids, remember they are less than 100%. It's a very small percentage that's ionizing. Um, so an example is acetic acid over here. This is acetic acid, the acid you would find in vinegar. And there we use a double arrow to indicate that, which essentially means something called equilibrium which means that we go kind of back and forth in the reaction and it's not fully one way towards the right side like a single arrow would imply. Um, strong bases, same idea. Rather than ionize though, we say they dissociate 100% in solution. Um, so when we write out a dissociation equation for a strong base, here's your strong bases here. Um, we put the base as a solid first because it's basically an ionic compound. We then put it in water and 100% of it becomes the ion of the metal and then the hydroxide. Same thing with this one here. 100% becomes the ion in the metal, and then the hydroxide. Likewise, for weak bases, um, similar to the weak acids, we use a double arrow. Remember, it's only a small percentage of the base that's dissociating in a weak base situation, but the point is we use our double arrow. And so here we have uh, ammonia. That was a good one to remember. It's a, it's a weak base when it's reacting with water. Um, it's going to receive an H from water. So that's going to be NH4 plus aqueous. And then we're going to get OH minus aqueous. 
and that happens in an equilibrium, double arrow because this is our weak base over here. So in the next video, we're gonna take a look at how to write ionization equations for acids and for bases. And dissociation equation for bases, I should say.